is God's anointed now generation in the building tonight. How many came here to worship God, the King of kings and the Lord of lords? I want to invite you up to these altars. The altars are open. Let's begin to worship and praise our God. Come on. Let's go. I need you, all, I need you guys to help, to help sing this song. For you, let your spirit move as we shout your praise from our hearts to your ears. All the glory is yours now, forevermore. Hear our worship, all we can give is for you. So we're here for you. So we dance and we sing, we sing. and we worship. We worship. You are King. For you, so we give everything, everything to the one who is worthy. We're here for you. Let your spirit move as we shout your praise from our hearts to your ears. All the glory is yours now forevermore. Hear our worship. All we can give is for you. So we hear. We hear for you. Sing for you. For you. Yes, for you. So we dance. We dance. Oh. And we sing. We worship you are king, you are king, and we're here for you, so we give everything, everything to the one who is worthy. We're here for you. Come on, gang. If you all came to worship God this evening, if you know our God is worthy of all praise, I need you to help me sing this next part. Come on. If you don't come, we won't move. We're desperate, Lord, for a touch from you. If you don't come, we won't move. We're desperate, Lord, for a touch from you. Sing it out. If you don't come, what? we won't move. Yes, we Lord, for a touch from you. If you don't come, we won't move. Yes, we Lord, for a touch from you. If you don't care, we won't move. Yes, we Lord, for a touch from you. You don't care, we won't move. Yes, we Lord, for a touch from you. If you don't, if you don't come, we won't move. We sing, we worship, we worship, you are king, you are king, and we're here for you, so we give everything, everything, to the one who is worthy, to the one who is worthy, our hearts are ready, Lord, so, we're here for you, if you don't come, we won't move, we're desperate, Lord, for it. Generation, let's praise God. Oh. Cause we need, we need a touch from you. Oh, cause we need Lord, a touch from you. Touch. 
Cause we need a, a touch from you Glory and power to our God forever and day. 
your attention on the Lord. Oh, just focus your attention on the Lord right now. I don't know what any anyone might be going through right now, but how many know the Lord is worthy in the good times and in the bad times? That He deserves our praise, our worship in the good times and in the bad times. I don't know what you're going through, but I want to encourage you, just begin to lift up your hands. Come on, any discouraged, anyone that might be discouraged, oh, by faith, when you just begin to lift up your hands and worship Him, God begins to take off that discouragement, oh, that, that, that burden off of your shoulders, just begin to worship Him right there where you're at. Just begin to worship Him.
King of kings, the Lord of lords. Come on, your best friend, your heavenly father, the one that knows all your secrets but still loves you, the one that is close by when, when you feel far away, the one that, that draws nearer when you don't feel so close at all. Hallelujah. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. While we were worshiping, and we're, we're here tonight, and we're celebrating a special thing, you know, uh, how God has used this ministry to reach people all around the world. We have different places represented in this place, but what he was reminding me, that each and every one of in the, us in this room were brought from a different place. We come from different lifestyles. We come from different backgrounds, we come from different hurts, we come from different pains, we come from different things, but the thing that we have in common is that God saw us in that place and he decided to reach down and, and pick us up, he decided to, to use our lives in a special way. Come on, if you're grateful that God found you where you were, oh come on, I said if you're grateful that God saw you where you were at, come on, and he decided to do about your situation, about your struggle, about your life. Come on, that's why we come into the house of God, because we're some grateful people. Man, I never want to stop giving God the praise that he deserves. He deserves it all, but man, I, I want to pray one more time before we jump into this. I want to pray for us because I know God's going to do something crazy, but I believe he's, he's going to move tonight, so. Last time, let's all lift our hands. Heavenly Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus, and we just want to thank you, God, because we know that you're already doing something special here in this house. We know that you're already moving and you're already gearing and shifting our hearts in a certain direction, God, because you brought us into this room tonight, because you want to speak to us, you want to inspire us, you want to encourage us, my God, for the one that's been hurting lately, you're going to remind him that he's called by you. The one that's been down lately, you're going to remind her that she is loved by you, that there is plans of a hope plans of a future, God, and that you are the one that is in control of it all. Father, so we give you the praise, we give you the honor, and we give you the glory all over this place. And come on in, let's begin to give God a shout of victory. Let's give God a, a shout of praise. Come on, let's give God all that he deserves tonight because he is a good God. Let me say amen. Come on, let me say Jesus. Come on, because he deserves it. You guys are probably wondering why I'm dressed all different. Come on, somebody. Everybody's like, oh, that then not even dressed. Oh, he's dressed nice. No, oh, he's dressed a little different tonight. Hallelujah. Right? Well, tonight is United We Can Night here at Victory Outreach Chino Gang Service. Oh, come on, who's repping tonight? Come on, I'm, I'm right here repping Mexico. Can I do it? Can I do my, my Greek? Can I do it? If you could beat me, uh, I'll give you a chance after service, but. Joy! 
One to ten, one to ten. Hey, man, well, that's a grito for you right there representing Mexico. But what I want you guys to do right now, we want to welcome you out to gang night. If this is your first time, we're more than grateful. Come on, lift your hands right there if this is your first night. Oh, hallelujah. Okay, we see you. Well, I did my grito. Now you need to take your time, greet somebody right here in the, in the crowd, meet somebody you've never met, and let's experience the love of God together because united we can. Hallelujah. Well, welcome out once again to Gang Night here at Victory Outreach Chino, the Mother Church. We are so excited to have everybody in the house with us and everybody watching online. And tonight is all about United We Can. Come on, United, we can take the world for Jesus. United, we can reach our friends and family. United, we can can do anything in Christ. Come on. God is good and he's with us, but man, our ministry is so special because we have family members all around the world. We have actually one of our brothers with us that's going to give the word of God tonight all the way across the pond. Come on, somebody, right? All the way from England right there. And there, we have many people from all over the place. I had the privilege, come on, right? Uh, I had the privilege to go to Mexico. Come on, that's why I had to rep it a little bit hard tonight. Come on, from Guadalajara, right? And it was an awesome time, but I got to experience the privilege and honor of serving God in a foreign country, right? And he does amazing things, and why we all had our chance to, to, to greet each other tonight. But we have a special video that we want to play for you right now. We have some greetings from different places all around the world. If you could turn your attention to the screens for those greetings. What's up, Chino gang? My name is Jair Castaneda. I'm currently right here in Third Wave Campus, here in Third Wave LA, but I come from the beautiful city of Panama, and I want to let you guys know that there is a revival breaking out right there in that beautiful city. Man, we're seeing Panamanians really accept the vision, really accept and internalize the promise, and taking a hold of what's theirs, man. Um, we're just so grateful for Victory Outreach here there in Panama because we're seeing Panamanians rise up. We're seeing families being reached. We're seeing third wavers becoming specialists in all the different areas, multimedia, worship, and we're seeing them taking their place. But it's not just Panamanians, but we're making a global impact right there. We're reaching people from Latin America, people from even China, in Korea and you know what there's a revival taking place right there in the beautiful city of Panama if you haven't been there man I encourage you you need to go out there you need to go see with your own eyes on what's happening in the beautiful city of Panama and man I encourage you man you have to be there you have to see it for yourself God bless you Chino Aloha and God bless you. My name is Dusty and we send you aloha and greetings right here from Victor Irish Hawaiian Islands. And let me tell you, God is doing something great in our church, in our gang. And let me tell you, there's life groups starting all over the island. And just last year, we launched our very first church right there in the city of Honolulu with Pastor Matt and Sister Tamika and our team. And let me tell you again that, that behind all the, the beauty, the oceans, the palm trees, man, there is a need right here in the Hawaiian Islands. Look, God's doing something great within our third wave, the gang. You know, we're starting to see new people come in into our church. We have our own services, and God's doing something special. And look, you know, United We Can is helping. United We Can is doing so many great things all over the world. And I know that, man, you're giving. You know, it goes to stuff like this. And I know that God wants to do something special within everywhere around the world. And I know that Hawaii is taking their place. And we're doing our part, you know, reaching the whole entire world for Jesus. Amen. And I know that God is continuing to do great things there in your church as well. So we just want to send you greetings. And aloha from Hawaii. Yes, sir. 
Hey Victor Outreach family, it's Stephanie. I've been here in Amsterdam for about four months in the Urban Training Center and I can personally say that God's been developing me in my leadership along with Team Concept. Because we're a pioneering class, we've gotten to work with many new people in new ways. We've also been exposed to cross-cultural evangelism. There in the Central Station, we're reaching out to many people who are passing through all the way from Germany, France, and other parts of Europe. They've not only gotten a chance to hear about the gospel, but many of them have came and gotten plugged in at our base right there in Amsterdam. I personally have found myself in the area of media. I'm a part of our team there at the base along with helping with the social media page. Uh, it's been amazing to see what God has been doing here in Amsterdam, but I'm also super excited to come back home and build with you there in Chino. I can't wait to see you guys. I'm praying for you guys and I'm excited to see you. God bless. Come on, let's give him a round of applause. Amen. Amen. How many of that's one of our very own, Stephanie? She's from our church right here at the Mother Church, amen. And it's exciting to see what's taking place all over the world. And I wanted the ushers and the usherettes to take their place. And it's found in Luke chapter 16, verse 10. It says, whoever could be trusted with very little can also be trusted with much. And whoever is dishonest with very little will honest, will also be dishonest with much much and how many know here tonight right there's some of us right we got money in our pockets right how many got a 20 on you right now wave your hand high if you got a 20 raise your hand if you got a five raise your hand if you got a dollar nobody got a dollar Yay! it's okay I pray here tonight that God is gonna bless you but how many know with that little God can do so much. Tell your neighbor, God can do much. God can do much, but it starts with you trusting in him. The Bible says to trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not lean on your own understanding. You know, sometimes as young people, we like trusting in ourselves. Come on, somebody. But how many when we trust in God, guess what? God comes through. Let me say that again. God comes through. And I pray here tonight that you give unto the Lord because God will come through. And we also want to encourage you guys to give to our United We Can. I don't know about you, but seeing those people, it made me excited because how we know we're not just a local ministry, but we're a global ministry. Come on, somebody. So if you're a United We Can member, I encourage you to get a United We Can. But if you're giving here locally, you can see all the ways to give behind me. You could give right there with a QR code. You could text to give or the old-fashioned you could do with the envelope. Or you could do recurring. I am a recurring member. I just let it leave my bank account because I know God will come through. Amen. So I trust, I pray here tonight that all of you guys, that you guys will take a step of faith, right, that you will give, right, and trust in God. And what we're going to do here tonight, we're going to do a little bit of something different. They're going to put a QR code on the screen right now. And what we're going to be doing right now is we're going to be doing Run for Hope. Tell your neighbor, Run for Hope. Say it again, Run for Hope. And if you don't know what Run for Hope is, it's one time a year where we come together as a ministry and we come to raise finances to establish works all over the world. So I want, this is what I want you to do. Everybody pull out their phones. Everybody. I want everybody to pull out your phones. Lift your phone. Pull it out. I know all you guys are on your phones. Don't lie. Pull it out and scan this QR code. And this is the cool thing. It's free to sign up. All you got to do is register. So scan the QR code right now. I'll give you guys a few seconds to scan the QR code. And we want every single person in this room to scan the QR code and register for Run for Hope. And you know what's cool about Run for Hope is you can do different ways. Pastor Spencer is going to be doing gummies for hope. Come on, somebody. I don't know about you, but that sounds bomb. Some gummies for hope. Travis is doing cupcakes for hope. Come on, somebody. I heard they're protein cupcakes. I heard those are bomb. So there's different ways that you can get involved. You could do bicycle for hope, right? You could video game for hope. Come on, somebody, right? You could do different ways to get involved. But we want to encourage you to scan the QR code. Imagine at Run for Hope that the gang raises over $100,000. Let me say that again. Imagine if the gang raised $100,000. And I bet we can do it. 
I bet that every single person in this room, right, could raise some finances, right? Because with these finances, we're going to raise, right, money to establish works all over the world. And those are just a few testimonies. But I bet when you plant your seed and you, you come to a part of Run for Hope, we're going to see different testimonies from different parts of the world, from Japan, right, from India, from, from Russia, right? But it requires every single one of us getting involved. Amen. So let's all stand here tonight. Reach down deep in your pockets, amen. And also, too, with Run for Hope, you can even do a small blessing. You could do 10 bucks, 15 bucks, 20 bucks. Come on, you can even do 50. You could do 100. Come on, somebody. But I want to challenge you here tonight. Get involved. Let's make a global impact all over the world. Because how many know we're not just a local ministry. We're a global ministry, amen. We're not just a mother church. We're the mother church of Victory Outreach International. We are a global ministry. So I challenge you here tonight. Get involved. And I pray here tonight that God will do something special in your life. Amen. So raise your gift all the way up as high as you can right now. Raise up your phones. Raise up your envelopes. Right? And let's pray. Amen. Father, we just thank you, Lord, here tonight, God. And God, we pray, God, that you would just have your way, God, as we give unto you, God. God, with our, our tithes and our offering, God. Even with our global offering, God. Even with Run for Hope, God. God, we know, God, with these finances, God, you're going to make a global impact, Jesus. And, God, we know, God, that something spectacular is going to take place within this movement, God, within the third wave, God. So, God, we pray you would just bless them, God. Lord, we thank you and we love you. In Jesus' my name we all say amen. At this time, you guys can make your way down, put it in the, in the basket. And at this time, I'm going to call up Rocky and Kaylin for something cool. Come on, come on, is God's anointed now generation in the house? Yeah. Okay, shout out to David Anopa. Is God's anointed now generation in the house? Okay, I got a question. And I need answers to my question. I want to know what tear is representing tonight. Okay, but I'm going to ask, is the young adult tear in the house? All right. Valid. Okay, that's valid. Question is, I, they're pretty hype, but let's see if they can get hype right now. Is the high school tear in the house? That's cool. All right. That was cool. Now, now we're going to be biased on this one. Is the new gen tear in the house? Yeah. Oh, New gen one. Okay, okay. Check it out. Check it out. This is what we need. We need some down gang warriors and gang girls right now. We're going to need two new gen, two high schoolers, and two young adults right now. Right now. Right Make now. Right now. To this stage. If you're with it. Okay, we got we a new gen. Come on, Ooh. come on. Okay. Where you at, high school? Where you come at, on, young we adults? We need another new gen. -er. We got to come on, come on, we come on. We need two high school. Okay, we got a young adult young coming adults. up. We got a young adult. Come, come right on, here. Leilani. I, where, I don't know, is, is the high school here tonight? Where are they at? Where are they? Oh, high, oh, high school. She's you a high, high schooler. School. She's a high schooler. My bad. My bad. She just, she just went right, in. She went right. in. So we got one new gender, one high school, one young adult. We still need three more from each chair. Three more. Come on. Come up. Come up. Come up. Come on. We're, we're about to start calling you out right now. Come on. Come on. Don't make All us right, do uh, it. Get my boy, uh, my boy uh, uh, Patrick up here. No, uh, um, uh, Brian. 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 Get Brian up here. Come on, Brian. Come on, Joan. So we got another young adult. So go to the next side. Where's our high another schooler young adult. We need a high schooler. We got another new Jenner. Come on. High school, where you at? High school, where you at? I'm about to give you the mic, Sonny. Come on. What where's about high school Ari at? or Serenity? We need one more height. Where are they at? Where are they at? Who, who'd you say? Who'd you say? Ari or Serenity? Nehemiah, come on. Come on. Your oh, leader. You are the anointed it. chosen one. Come on. <laughs> come on. Come on. This is what we're going to do right here. This is the way we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna run it right now. So you're going to be team one. You can go on that side. You'll be team two. Team one. So come over here, Brian. Team two on this side. Wait, maybe team we one. should do a girl. Girl on that side, boy on this side. Mm, good, good, good. Okay, okay, okay. So we'll have Joan on that side then. Yeah. Okay, that's good. That's good. Okay, so check it out. This is what we're going to do, guys. If we can have the buckets. Where are the buckets at? We need those buckets. Somebody say, bring the buckets. Bring the buckets. Yeah. So, I heard we got some hoopers in the house. 
Mm-hmm. Young Nehemiah. We also got we also got Brian right here. This man's like a four-star recruit. Hooper. This is what we're gonna do. This is what we're gonna do. I'm gonna need this team to stand on the side over here. Come on, come over here. This team right here. Where's this team? Okay, go ahead, explain it, Kaylee. Okay, so basically what this team is gonna do right here is they're gonna get blindfolded. So you're gonna have mm -hmm. two shooters and you're gonna have one catcher. So who do you want to catch on this side? One of you guys is gonna hold the buckets in your hand, each one, so you're gonna grab one, and then the person's gonna shoot it, but they're gonna be blindfolded, so you're gonna have to try and make it go in. So who do you want to be your catcher? Who's catching? You wanna catch? Choose wisely. Yeah, you guys are one team. We got one new gen, one high school, and one young adult. Okay, she's catching. Ooh. All right, so you guys got to blind your, blindfold your guys' selves. Go, go, and you guys go. are going to get 45 seconds to blindfold your guys. I mean, 45 seconds. You guys are going to get 45 seconds to try and shoot. No cheating, all right? Hey, she's looking gangster right now. Dang. So, Joan, you're going to hold one in your hand? Hold one in your hand? One of the buckets. Yeah, okay. hold the bucket in your hand and stand on the side right here. And then each one they shoot in, you move it to the side and grab another bucket until so all of these are empty. So, so you're gonna I'm going to shoot the bucket in, and I'm going to be blindfolded, and you're going to have to try and make me make it inside of the bucket. Yeah, you can move, you can but you, around, you're right move here. Around, jump off the stage, whatever yeah, whatever you got to do, do to try to and let these people make basketball. it. Here's your basketball. All right, can Listen we have that me. basketball? All oh. right. Okay, so one at a time, one at a time. Look, they're going to have 45 seconds. They're going to have 45 seconds to make um, a bucket. They're going to have 45 seconds. So... Whichever team wins or scores the most buckets, they, they, they got the marbles. They're winning all the marbles tonight. So you guys ready? All right, 45 ready? seconds. They're going to go one three. at a time. You go after him. Ready? In three, two, one, go. Ooh, all right, that's take one. it out, take it out. That's one. Give him the ball. Wait, wait, wait. You move. Go, 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 go. Scoot over and then grab him. Give him the ball. Okay, now you. That's wait, two. Wait, 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 wait. That's two. That's 10 seconds down. Go behind him. Go behind him. Well, that's three. I right, go behind her. Go behind her. Hey, she killing right, it. Ball. Right here, right here. That's four. Go, go, go. Ooh, that's not the one. That's Everybody, not the give one. it to her. Give it to her. That's right. That's five right there. Hold that's it, five it, right there. Me, you, you that one? All right, 30 seconds. Go, go, go. You're good. She got it, she got it, she got Three. it. Three, two, one, stop. Ooh. How many was that? How many they got? How many they got? One, two, three, four, five, six. They That's got six, they got good. six. All right, so come on, step up, step up, step up. Let's see if they can run it. Okay, Brian's gonna be the catcher. Okay. Where's the other bandana? Okay, okay. Put them up, put them up, put them up. In case we gotta get a little technical, this is 45 seconds and 67 milliseconds that they have to try and beat. Just in case if anything happens. You guys ready? You guys ready? Gangster. All right, where the balls at? Where the basketballs? Uh huh, uh huh, uh huh. All right. Three, two, one, shoot. Go, Eric. Hey. Okay, go, go. That's one. Wait, wait, that's one. On, okay, five shoot. Five more. Five more. That's another one. That's another one. Go, go, go. Go, Leilani, go. All right, Eric, that's all you. Come on, one more to tie, one more to tie. Okay, one more to win, one more to win. Hey! Oh, you missed it? Let's go, let's go, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. That's another Three, one, so they're gonna close it out, so two, they're gonna close it out. One, and... How many did they get? They won, they won, they won. Let's give a hand for them tonight, come on. Good job, good job. Come on, guys.
Amen, amen. Come on, gang. Are we still excited here tonight? I liked that game. It was fun. <laughs> Come on. Uh, I would have beat everybody. I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, that was an amazing game. I think I would have uh, took the dub for that one for sure. But, gang, we are going to give our announcements tonight, but we're going to do it a little different. Why don't you look to your neighbor and say, a little different. A little different. Amen. So under your seats, there is a few uh, chosen people that have these cards under there. So if you have a card under your so seat, everyone I want check you to under your seats if you have a card. And grab it and then if make you do, your way up to the stage. Don't give it to, to your neighbor. Come on up. Woo! Yeah. Come on down. Way up here. <laughs> you come up to the stage once you grab the card. You can make your way up to the stage. Anybody else? next to you that has nobody sitting in it, can you check to see if there is something underneath it? Oh, it's hiding. <laughs> All right. Cool. All right, so I'll give the first announcement. We have V groups throughout the week. Everybody say V group. V group. That's a victory group. You can find one near you on our biochino.org website. And who has number two? Number two. Does anybody have number All two? All right. Can you read it? <laughs> so you're going to read it? So just so you know, they're in different languages. So she's going to right now, you know, try to kill this. And <laughs> Servicio de fuego, poder e oras, oraco, na cuarta fiera, sete a mía. Does anybody know what language that was? Portuguese. All right. Okay, so you think she did pretty good, right? I think she killed it. So you get a, you get a candy because you got one right. You can have the first pick. Well, that's my favorite. All right. I was hoping nobody grabbed that one. I'm just kidding. Who has number three? Three. All right. The same thing. Here we go. Aus Y Kunjen Der. Good. Damn. School. Fred tag. Um. Nineteen. Okay. Or. The red big. All right. All right. It's okay. You you definitely don't get a candy. Um. Does anybody know what language that was? <laughs> German, German. All right, that's where Christopher, Chris was born there. So he, you know, he might have some, uh, he might know that one. Who was number four? All right, let's try it. It's a uh, service de celebración du de manche a once héroes. Avec no veye generación dans le love. Does anyone know? Oh my God, French! Good job. You did really good, good actually. Good job. Too, All right, yeah. I think you did pretty good. So you get a candy too. You can pick one. All right. And then who here has number five? All right. <laughs> Our gang regional. Noche de gang los domingos a las seis de la tarde. Does anybody know what language that is? Yeah. Hey, Amen. And our gang regional killed it, so he deserves right. a candy. And then this one is not on anybody's card, but this one, uh, can the men of God in the house make some noise tonight? Hey, Amen. Well, this uh, on Saturday, August 6th at 9 a.m., we're going to be having our multi-regional men's discipleship and lunch, and we're going to be having a special guest speaker. He's going to be a, he was a former actual Dodger player, so that's exciting. His name is Daryl Strawberry, so you want to make sure you register at biochino.org and you don't miss out. And then also uh, that following Sunday, August 7th, he's going to be coming at Sunday at 10 a.m. to speak, so you want to make sure you don't come alone because God's going to move in such a powerful way that morning. Amen. And then... Uh, how many of you know our pastor is an author? Amen. Do we have any descendants in the house tonight? 
Amen. Well, our pastor just finished writing his book, and they're actually for sale right now. You can go ahead and order it at viochino.org, and you don't want to ma- uh, miss out on this opportunity to grab that book and read it. It's, it's a book of honor, legacy, and promises, so you want to make sure you grab it. Amen. And then who has number nine? <laughs> Tell Do Chung Tai Trin Mang Shai Hai. Does anybody know what language that is? I didn't even hear you guys, to be honest, but that is Vietnamese, right? And what he was saying was uh, follow us on all our social media platforms <laughs> Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube as well. And a quick last announcement before we exit is that any young adults, uh, this Friday, our pastor is actually going to be speaking in San Diego, right? And, and he wants the young adults to mobilize and make it on out there. So actually, this Friday, uh, six, uh, five, we're going to meet here and leave and head to San Diego. We're going to carpool. So we want to encourage you, young adults, uh, to make sure you even register. And you could go ahead and register at VOSD.TV. So you want to make sure you don't miss out. It's going to be awesome. And we're going to be able to see our pastor speak in San Diego. So you don't want to make a uh, miss out on that. And for that church, that's going to do it for our announcements. If you go ahead and give them a hand. Hi, my name is Danielle Villasenor from Victory Outreach Whittier, and I love to craft for hope. One of the things I love to create is clay earrings because I believe it makes any outfit pop. Run for Hope to me is an opportunity to save people's lives around the world that are battling drug addiction, anxiety, human trafficking, and through our finances, we are literally reaching treasures out of darkness. And I know through the finances that I raise through Run for Hope are helping rescuing women from human trafficking. And I love to craft for hope. This year, do what you love. Sign up today by visiting vorunforhope.org. Ready for a brand new world at your fingertips. Introducing VOI Plus, streaming a collection of some of the greatest VOI moments from over 50 plus years. Watch exclusive and new content you won't be able to see anywhere else. All in one place. Enjoy every moment on your favorite device. Anytime, anywhere. Watch, grow, and share. Subscribe today. Amen. Whoa. We still excited? Amen. A lot of powerful things are happening. I know a lot of us probably have Disney Plus. Netflix, HBO Max, etc. But we have our own VOI Plus. God's on the move, and our ministry, man, we're we're moving. We're we're accelerating, and I'm so blessed tonight to be able to introduce our speaker. And uh, I remember um, something funny. Uh, one of the guys that I know from Manchester, he he told me, hey, um, somebody was in a, you know, uh, one of the guys from Liverpool was gonna hit you up. And then so somebody added, followed me on Instagram. And who is this white guy? Like, you know, randomly. <laughs> and then um, I was like, oh, okay. So they told me after what it was. But it's, it's so powerful because the ministry that we come from, like, I, did, I haven't even known him. It's been only maybe a couple, couple weeks. And I feel close to him. And I, I, I honestly, man, like, he's, I could consider him my brother because 
of how beautiful our ministry is. We're all focused on one goal, and we come from we come from the same the same roots. He might be all the way across the world, but the ministry, the foundations, and and the principles that we believe that's what makes our our ministry so special. Because I, I might not know the person next to you, right? We might not know somebody from across the world, but once. Once we embrace and once they come to the church, you feel the love, you feel that excitement, you feel the energy. And, and it's all because of our ministry. It's all because of God. And I'm just so blessed to be able to introduce him here tonight. And he's 24. And he looks like he's 20, but he's not. He's 24. And he's been married for, he's been married for two months with his wife. And he's from Liverpool. And I always try to, I remember when I met him, I tried to, I tried to talk with him like in the, in the accent. But I won't do that. And he's from... Um, He's, he's the gang leader there in Liverpool, and he's also the UK and Germany regional there. And I was trying to think of maybe what's something, what's something I can say to break the ice with him. But, uh, man, I, I know that he's half Irish, and uh, it's just a blessing to have him here with us. And um, help me welcome up Nathan People. And if at this time we can all stand, let's give him a hand. Come on, we can do we can better than that. Amen, amen. You can take your seats. It's so good to be with the family. And uh, I just want to invite my beautiful wife up, Giovanni. My, sometimes I call her Rapunzel. My beautiful Dutch European wife. And she's going to share a little word of testimony. Hi, guys. Um, so exciting to be here with you guys tonight. We come all the way from Victoria, which is Liverpool, UK, Germany region. Um, but I'm actually from Germany, from Frankfurt. So if I, if I would have known that it was United We Can, I would have brought my German outfit. But I don't have it with me here. Um, but since it's United We Can, I just wanted to share with you guys a little bit about what God's doing in Europe through United We Can. And my parents were sent to Germany like 15 years ago, right? Back in the day, no team ministry, no budget for anything, you know what I mean? <laughs> So they had to start out from nothing, you know what I mean? It was my mom, my dad, me, six, and my brother, right? Five. <laughs> so my mom's like learning to play guitar, pulling me when I'm 10 on the worship team, you know what I mean? The struggles back in the day. And then nowadays we can see churches all across Europe. Our men's home is in a castle. Imagine taking people from the lowest of lows, telling them in the kingdom they're royalty, and putting them in a castle to live. It's amazing what God's been doing, but even we just had Code Red right before we came over for World Conference, right? And I went over to Frankfurt again because I just moved to Liverpool. And my heart was absolutely broken walking through my own city, seeing 21-year-olds looking for shelter from domestic abuse and 17-year-olds in the alleyways shooting up heroin and 14-year-olds being dragged into brothels by pimps, you know what I mean? Like children, gang is in the streets in Frankfurt. Frankfurt's the drug capital of Europe. And that's where God has placed a victory outreach. But that's just one city. That's just one nation. There's so many cities in Europe that is so far from God. And we are having an outreach into Ireland this October. We had an outreach into Poland last December. We're looking to send out four churches in the next five years. Poland and Romania, Ireland and Wales. And we're so excited for what God's going to do in Europe. And I have actually a quick video that I want to show you guys. Because I know that it's sometimes difficult to imagine the burden in other countries. Right? When you're, when you're all the way over here, you're in America, you guys have a lot of churches over here. You guys kind of back each other up a little bit. But back home, everything is a bit more separate. Everyone's kind of on their own two feet. So we need United We Can. We rely heavily on United We Can. And it's that little bit that each person gives that allows for a new church to be planted, for a new rehab to be planted, for a new gang home to be planted, a new leadership hub to be planted. A new UTC. We don't have a third wave campus in Europe yet. But we believe that what God's done here and what God did in South Africa and what God did in Panama, that God's going to do in Europe. So we have a quick video that the gang in Frankfurt put together to show you guys a little bit of the need and a little bit about our city in Frankfurt. Amen.
hear of wars and rumors of wars, but see to it that you are not alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. Nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of birth pains. Then you will be handed over to be persecuted and put to death, and you will be hated by all nations because of me. At that time, many will turn away from the faith and will betray and hate each other. Drug overdoses are climbing opioid overdoses. Crystal meth is the fastest growing drug at the moment. We are here right at the meth is being produced and sold. Consumers can get it cheaply, and that is why it is so popular with young people today. Drugs being laced with fentanyl, because fentanyl is in everything. At least four people have been killed. Like violent clashes are erupting across Europe. The, the biggest war in Europe since 1945. Threat of possible war. Strongest warning so far. Largest conflict on European soil. There have been violent scenes. Pure violence by idiots, particularly in places like Austria and Germany. They were inspired to conduct those attacks in Europe. They're fighting Islamic radical terrorists internally. From the Islamic extremist threat to Europe right now. One activist shouted, where is your God now? Churches burned and street preachers arrested for spreading hate speech. They are targeting the people of the cross, the Coptic Christians. They're showing the execution of 21 Coptic Christians. Northern Germany have created chaos. But I not I not But I I am being raised to reach a whole generation in order. Stage my generation. I will give my generation to reach. Because I am a for my generation. I am fear. I am here to come. Three victory homes. Yes, we are now 17 to I am here to teach my generation. I am here to teach my I said this third wave is going to be the largest wave of revival that this ministry has seen. Come on, give it up for the Lord. Come on, that's how united we can, and you know, that's just in Germany, and your giving goes so far across the world that, you know, so, there's some places we can't go, but there's many places that our finances can go, and uh, you know, seeds have been planted, seeds have been watered in our ministry, and God has built this tremendous ministry from the ground up since 1967, and that's why we're all here and sat here today, to unite it we can. But why don't we stand? We're going to sing a couple of verses and invite God's presence. God's presence is here has been moving. The, the worship at the beginning was so powerful. And I can really sense that, you know, God wants to do something special inside each one of us here tonight. So, you know, you can go ahead and just lift your hands and close your eyes. And, you know, just, just ask God to, to move in your heart. Ask God to move in your life.
more time, Holy Spirit. Come on, the Holy Spirit is welcome here. Come on. You could have been anywhere in this Sunday night, but God has brought you here. God has brought you to the gang service. God has a word in store for you tonight. Come on, lift your hands in this place if you believe God is going to move. God wants to do something supernatural. Give it up for Jesus. Come on, you can do better than that. You don't, you don't, you should have looked more for me. Give it up for Jesus. Come on, Jesus is in this room tonight. And I believe that God is going to speak. I believe there's countries inside each one of you. I believe that God's going to place a destination on your heart. I believe that there's a lane. I believe that there's a leadership hub. I believe that God's going to release the worshiper in this place tonight, the gang leader in this place tonight, the new gen leader in this place tonight, the high school impactor leader in this place tonight. Come on, if you're believing that, give him a shout of praise. No, I just want to give thanks as well for, you know, your leaders and your team. You have such powerful leaders in the in the Mother Church, and uh, you know we watch you from afar, and it's like a dream come true to be able to to speak here tonight. It's such an honor and such a privilege. You know, you you. I've been so far away, but so close in in my heart. I've been watching you online since COVID, and. You know, it's, it's such a tremendous opportunity and I do not take it lightly and you just have some powerful leaders in the room here this morning. And, uh, you know, as, as um, Brother Adrian was saying, um, and God deposited exactly what he said um, about, about the relationships that we have with one another. He, he, he sat in my spirit and I, and I read it out and I, I said, I've only spent a little bit of time with the, with the leaders in this church, but I feel like it's been a lifetime. I feel like, you know, we go way back, that we've been brothers for a lifetime. And I think I spent maybe three or four minutes with some of the guys in the, in the green room, but that's what I love about our ministry. No matter what, what part of the country, no matter what nation you're from, we have family all around the world. But right now, if you would like to take your Bibles, we're going to be reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 5 to 9. And uh, this is a fresh word that God has been depositing in my spirit since World Conference. Um, I didn't know who it was for, but I believe that it's for the gang here in Victory Outreach Chino. It's fresh. I was up until 4 a.m. last night studying. So you've got all of God tonight and none of me because it's God's strength that is going to be speaking through me. I need it. And, uh, you know, I believe I have a a powerful word and God's going to speak to the hearts of each one of us here tonight. So just to put it in there a little bit of context, um, the people are, they're complicating things a little bit. And uh, they seem to be gearing their focus towards Paul and Apollos rather than God. And Apollos is an eloquent man. He's someone who spoke boldly. He's someone who had great influence. And he was 
a disciple of the Apostle Paul's. They worked as a team and he plays a key role in the establishment and development of the early church. But why don't we get into the scripture? It says in verse 5, What after all is Apollos and what is Paul? Only servants through whom you came to believe, as the Lord has assigned to each his task. I planted the seed, Apollos watered it, but God, come on, say, but God. Come on, say, but God. But God has been making it grow. I'm going to say that again. I planted the seed, Apollos watered it, but God has been making it grow. So never the one who plants nor the one who waters is anything, but only God who makes things grow. The one who plants and the one who waters have one purpose, and they will each be rewarded according to their own labor. For we are co-workers in God's service, you are God's field and God's building. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we just come before your throne here this evening. Lord, I am so grateful and so honored and so privileged to, you know, be able to share with uh, all the young men and women of God in, in, in this house. Lord, we just pray for your anointing to fill the room, Lord God, for your anointing to take full control. Lord, I just pray in the mighty name of Jesus that you use me as a, as a vessel, as an advocate of your Holy Spirit, Lord, that, Lord, if there is words that you want me to say that aren't in the notes, I pray in the name of Jesus that you take full control in this place. Father, have your way, have your way. We give you all the honor and all the glory and the God's anointed now generation said, Amen. Amen. You can take your seats. So the title of the message tonight is, But God. Okay, and after this, I believe that you'll never see the word but and, and use it again the same in your life. Every time that word but comes, you'll think of my voice. You know, you'll think of this, this word. Because I don't want to just speak to you for a moment here tonight. I want to speak beyond the moment. I want to speak into your destiny. I know God is going to speak right into your heart. And when we use this word but in its proper grammatical form, basically it contrasts with what has just been mentioned. I want to go and watch a movie, but I want to go, I was going to go and pray this morning, but. And you know, the but cancels everything that you've just said out, right? It just cancels that right out. And it usually comes with an added statement. The added statement is this scenario that, you know, a Paul can reach you and a, an Apollos can raise you, but it's God that's going to expand you. But it's God that is going to expand you. I'm going to say that again. A Paul can reach you. Come on, a Paul can reach you. And Apollos can, can raise you. He can water that seed. But it's God that is going to expand. But it's God that is going to elevate. But it is God. Come on, it is God. And uh, as people, sometimes we can complicate things, right? Sometimes, you know, we can begin to comp complicate things. And back in these, these times, the people within the church were beginning to complicate things. And they were beginning to hold Paul to a standard and Apollos to a standard. And they were beginning to lose focus on God. But then there was a man of God that rose up. And a man of God began to break it down in the layman's terms. He began to simplify things and... I don't know about you, but I feel in this generation that sometimes we can complicate things. Sometimes we can get mixed up. And I'm not just talking about, the, you know, focusing on the... I'm talking about, you know, we need to think outside the box tonight because there's many things that we can complicate things on. It does, I'm, I might take this scripture out of context, but, you know... I'm believing that this is, this, is, this is a word from God here tonight. And, you know, God's word is alive and it is active. And, uh, you know, I feel sometimes that we do too much, too much talking and not enough, not enough walking. We do too much talking and, and not enough walking. And that's where the complications begin to come in when we can uh, tend to say a lot rather than walking a lot, rather than fulfilling, you know, what God has, has called us to do. 
And it's, it's been told that Cambridge University had a small group whose members have an IQ of 140 or higher. So here we have a lot of intellectual, smart, really intelligent people. They gathered for a convention in San Francisco. While several members lunched at a local cafe, it was discovered that their salt shaker had, a, had, a, had an S on the lid and it contained pepper. And their pepper shaker, which had a P on the lid, was full of salt. And here we had a debate ensuing between these very smart intellectual smart people as to how they could exchange the contents of each shaker without spilling the contents while using the implements they had at hand. Following a lively problem-solving conversation, discerning all the facts, the group landed on what they believed was a brilliant solution. They would utilize a saucer, a napkin, and a straw. Now they called the waitress over to impress her with this brilliant solution. Ma'am, they said, we couldn't help but notice the pepper shaker contains salt and the salt shaker contains... Oh, the waitress interrupted. I'm sorry about that. And she proceeded to unscrew the caps of both the bottles and switch the caps. i pause for a little minute. But the moral of the story is they made things so complicated that they completely missed the solution. They completely missed the solutions. And I think sometimes we can, we can resonate with that and be a bit like that. And in this portion of scripture, the people began to say, I follow Paul and Apollos. And the reasons may be because they had great leadership skills. They had great preaching techniques. But what I like about Paul and Apollos is that it wasn't a title that drove them. It wasn't a title that drove them. And Paul reminds the people that they're only servants of God and that they, they have been given a specific task by God. And people who are servant leaders like Paul and Apollos have confidence in their identity and who they are. They don't let pride get in the way. They serve instead of command and they understand the concept of those who humble themselves will be exalted and those who exalt themselves will be humbled. And as this third wave we should really begin to identify and define our place within this movement. Be confident in our calling. Be confident in who we are, you know, and the, and the lane that God has called us to. Because you imagine a pilot who drives a plane and he gets on the plane and he has all these buttons right in front of him and he ain't confident in his, in his job. He ain't, he ain't feeling seasoned in, in, in what he's been called to do. And he begins to press all these different buttons on the plane. He begins to press this button and that button and he begins to press the big red button. Or can you imagine a doctor? You come in and, you, and, and he has to uh, do a surgery and he has to cut you open and he, say, and he's, he begins to let a Bit of, let a bit of doubt set in and he begins to say, no, I'm going to cut this this way. No, I'm going to cut that way. No, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cut this area. You know, you imagine these people doing these type of things, but these people must be seasoned in their calling. They must be seasoned in, in who they are and what they've been called to do or there's going to be consequences that's going to come in. They could cause more damage than good. And I think as a generation that we must be confident, right, in who we are, who we've been called, called to be, and not attaching labels to us. I like to call the labels the luggage of life. You know, you've seen weary travelers, you've maybe seen it on TV, but you've seen them, right? Everything they have crammed into to the luggage, staggering through terminals, strag staggering through hotel lobbies. You may have seen some of the people at conference, but... They have overstuffed suitcases, trunks, duffel bags, backpacks, backache, feet burn, eyelids all droopy. And we've all seen it. And at times, I think we've been people like that too. If not our physical luggage, at least our spiritual load. The luggage of life, excess baggage, the burdens you were never intended to bear. And I believe tonight it's time to release some of them burdens. 
I believe there's some people in this place that have been holding on to some things and God wants to release them burdens that you were never intended to, to bear and God wants to let you know that you're a child of God and God wants to let you know that you've been called to victory outreach and this God's anointed now generation and God has a place for you and God has a lane for you and it's time to stop asking who, I, who am I and to ask who he is because when we begin to understand who he is and stop asking who we are then we, be, we begin to understand him more because our identity is in Christ so when we understand him more we understand ourselves more right we've all been created in God's image perfectly and wonderfully made you know, new gen, I believe we've got new gen here tonight. And God's going to use your mouth in this generation. God's going to use your voice in this generation. I believe that we've got impactors in here tonight. That God's going to use your hands in this generation. God's going to use your hands to heal people. And I believe that we've got young adults in the house tonight that is influential within this generation and God has created you specifically and you know have you ever made something back in school some of you may still be in school and have you ever made something that you've been proud of you know back in the day whenever I was in school before I got expelled from school I uh, you know I never done too well in school I, uh, I went I went to one school got expelled went to another school I was like the class clown and uh, I was always getting in trouble. And I never thought that I could ever get a qualification. I never thought that I could, you know, ever do anything good in life. But how many know that God qualified me? God put words in my mouth. God put power in my hands. And it was God's anointing that elevated me. But in school, I used to really enjoy art class. I don't know why it was. I think there's a bit of a creative inside of me. And uh, I used to really enjoy art. And we used, to, uh, we used to make things out of clay. We used to make things out of clay. We would have pounded it. We would have shaped, mold it, or sculptures. And after the process of hardening them sculptures, we glazed our sculptures and made them all pretty. And it was a pretty cool process. We made lopsided bowls, we made pencil holders for our parents, and they weren't anything special. But one thing I can't remember is my parents used to display them proudly. They used to display them proudly. And, you know, I think that's the way God looks at us as well, that we may have imperfections, we may not be all refined, we may not, look, you know, be... be perfect in, 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 in our ways, but I believe God looks at us like the way our parents looked at, at, at that art project that I had once done. I believe he looks at us proudly, and out of all things God has created, galaxies, rivers, mountains, planets, you are the best of all of them things. You are God's most precious asset, his most valued creation of all, a gift that has been made perfect in his image. When we come to God, a thing called sanctification takes place. You become sanctified, set apart. Then the process to become like him sets in. And how many know that can be a hard process? That there can be trials and tribulations that may appear. Things can come up. And, you know, for, for myself, I'm a home graduate. I went into the home. And I know what sanctification is like. I was raw. Whenever I went into that home, I was court committed. The police, I got sent to Victory Outreach Liverpool Men's Home from a prison cell. And as I began to sit around that home, I began to think, what is life? Things were looking pretty crazy when I stepped into that home. I didn't really understand what was going on. I didn't understand what was taking place. I didn't want to be there. You know, I thought that everyone's head had fell off and uh, that this place is worse than taking drugs. And that's the mentality I was in at the time. But God began to do something with inside me. You know, I had court, I had two court cases when I went into that, that man's home. And I think my first prayer request was, Lord, let me get over this court case and I'll serve you the rest of my life. But at the moment and at the time, I didn't know what I was declaring. I didn't know and understand what I was speaking into the atmosphere. And the sanctification began to set in. And when the sanctification begins to set in, the conviction levels increase, right? And as I got away with that court case, the three and a half year 
a prison sentence that I should have been doing. God court committed me. He found me worthy to be court committed to the man's home for 12 months. I was on bail. I done my probation. But he reminded me of that prayer request. He reminded me of that time when I said to him, Lord, if you get me away with this case, I'll serve you. So he began to speak to me in that room. He began to place burden within me in that prayer room. And my life was never the same. So I'd done 12 months in the men's home. And the seed was planted. There was leaders placed around me to water that seed. And I began to understand that statement. But God, God began to take control in my life. And you know, we as, as people, we, we have the ability to plant. We have the ability to plant seed. We have the ability to, to water that seed. But ultimately, it's God that's going to make that seed grow. Ultimately, ultimately, it's God that is going to expand. In other words, it may sound like we can do a lot. We can serve. We can give our gifts. We can give our abilities. But God, even with, even with the title tonight, but God, if you can read between the lines, Paul planted, Apollos watered, but God. God. They're saying God gets the glory. And I'm a gl glorified God right now. I thought that I could never make it in this world. I thought that I could never break the chains of addiction. I thought that God could never see me fit to take a mic. I thought I could never speak in front of two people, never mind how many people we, I'm speaking to tonight. I thought that God could never use me. I thought that my life was gone. I once got kidnapped. I once got put in the trunk of a car. I once got battered. I once got bruised. I once got my ribs broken. I thought that I would never break the chains of addiction. I thought I would never come out of that dark place. I thought I would never come out of that place where the enemy had me bound, where he had me in that place of depression, where I was suicidal, where my parents had to bring me to hospital, where they had to see my chest get pumped and brought back to life. I thought that God could never use me. But God... I shouldn't have everything I have right now, but God. I shouldn't be set free from the thoughts, but God. Everything that I knew, everything that I wanted back then before I knew God was centered upon the humanistic values and standards, and I seek the world to satisfy my soul. It didn't work. I wanted answers, so I exhausted every single avenue the world had to offer until I found the answer and that was Jesus and I believe that there's a generation that is rising up and there is a generation that's seeking a spiritual encounter there's a generation that is taking hallucinogenics they're taking uh, DMT they're taking acid they're taking all sorts of drugs to seek a spiritual encounter but I'm here to tell you that I took everything and I did not find the answer in the world it was Jesus it was God and evolution is being pushed in our schools to our children. Science says that we need four basic elements to survive. That is water, air, food, and light. And now we look to the Bible and what the Bible tells us. It says, I am the living water. I am the bre breath of life. I am the bread of life. I am the light of this world. Science was right that we need Jesus to live. And I think in this generation that things are becoming complicated. And it's something that we all battle with because the generation is very smart. It's very intellectual. It's very intelligent. But sometimes we may lack in common sense. Can I get an amen? How many know that sense ain't that common no more? But third, we have, I'm here to tell you tonight that it isn't that complicated. That we have the purest form of a godly vision that is being pumped into our veins to reach the broken, to expand the kingdom, to dispossess the nations, to be the generation that breaks generational curses. And sometimes we think that we know best and sometimes we think that we don't know enough and sometimes we go down into that deep rabbit hole looking for that deep, deep solution, complicating everything, trying to work everything out. We have to do this to get here and so Sometimes we talk too much, but God, I think as humans that we are designed to take the ministry to a certain level, 
And I know I'm in the room with many influential leaders, talented and gifted people. We can build, we can reach, we can teach, we can do many, many things in our own strength. But God is ultimately the one who is going to break open that box, who surpasses the level that only the natural could take us to. And what I love about this scripture is that it brings clarity to our purpose as disciples and as children of God. Like Paul and Apollos, we are here to plant, we are here to water, but God is the one that grows. Paul takes the attention off himself and Apollos and directs it straight to God. He directs the people to looking in the right direction. And you know, seeds create cycles. They create cycles. I can plant an apple tree right now and my kids to come can eat from that apple tree for 50 years. But it has to be watered. It has to be watered. Now, when I was reading it and when I was asking God for the revelation on, on, on the portion of scripture, what I got was that the seeds could be scattered by everyone in here. And even the, even, the water, even the seeds could be watered by everyone in here, but the watering is the discipleship. The watering is the leadership. The, 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 the watering is the accountability that you have in your life. The, the, the watering is those who you, know, you go to and seek spiritual guidance that you go to and say, you know, I may be struggling today. You know, I may, I may be going through some stuff. How did you get through this? What did you do to get through that? And, you know, that's what God was speaking to me through that portion of Scripture was we can, we can scatter the seed. That's the seed being scattered. Then we have the leadership that comes in, but God, ultimately it's God that takes us and surpasses that level that the leaders can take us to. And now God can still plant in a dry season, but things may not grow in that season. Things You may not be seeing things growing in that season, but things can still be getting planted. And I believe that this is a season for, for victory, outreach, Chino, God's anointed now generation of a shift and direction. You know, there's still seats in here that need to be filled. I don't know about you, but I look around and I see a mega church. I see a mega gang in this place and there's still seats that need to be filled. And in order for us to see revival, we must see revival from the inside out. And I believe this message is specific to each one here tonight. God is saying that I desire the Pauls, I desire the Apollos, I desire the new gen, I desire the impactors, I desire the young adults to scatter the seed amongst the land, to bring a new person, a friend to evangelize and bring a soul to our third way of night. If each one had the conviction to reach one, then the gang would ultimately be doubled just like that. I know we got some Pauls in here. I know we got some Apollos in here. I know I'm speaking under the unction of the Holy Spirit right now that God just wouldn't give me this word. He would not give me this word if he didn't want it to be planted in the heart of his children. And come on, there's something that's stirring up inside of you right now. There's probably friends that are coming to mind. There's probably a revelation that's that's taking place that maybe you've been maintaining what God has given you, but, but God ain't called us to maintain. God has called us to enlarge. God has called us to expand. God has called us to go from glory to glory. I may be bending you out of shape tonight or I'm bending you in the shape. Come on. Understand that, that it's Christ that is increasing with inside you and it's going to be hard. It's going to be tough. It's going to be difficult. There's going to be battles that you're going to face. Trust me, there is going to be battles that you're going to face. And since I've been over here, I was speaking to a pastor. And it was a very encouraging time that I had with him. Because when I, when I look back on my life, I began to see God with me in them secret battles. And he was telling me that for me to speak at Third Wave Con, that God was watching me through my secret battles. That when nobody else was around, when nobody else was, was there, when nobody else was, you know, in, in, in that room with me, in that place with me, that God was there. God was checking my response. God was seeing if I fully trusted in him. God was seeing if I had the faith that I said I had. And God was there in them secret battles. And as I look back upon my life, I was so encouraged to see that God seen me. 
God heard me. Every prayer request in that man's home, come on. Every, every dark day in that man's home when I was staff and I was only 20 years of age and the older man used to come in and say, I'm old enough to be your grandpa. I ain't going to listen to you. I ain't going to listen to what you have to say. God seen me when I had them battles. God seen me when I had them secret battles. And I'm here to tell you tonight that God sees them secret battles. God sees them battles that you have to overcome. God sees them battles of the, the leaders that are in your life when they press you a little bit, when they, you know, when they, when they began, begin to rebuke you in certain areas and you feel that your world is crashing down. God sees that battle. God sees your response. God sees your act of obedience. John said that I must decrease so that Christ increases with inside me. Zechariah 4, 6 says, so he said to me that this is the word of the Lord to Sarah, not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord Almighty. As it is in the days of Sarah and Zechariah, it's a tongue twister, it was the spirit of the Lord that was needed to build the temple. And we need that same spirit today to build the mega church that God has promised our ministry to build the temple that God has placed. And today, this moment, know that the wind of God is blowing and this is your season. This is your time to believe again. Believe that God can open the doors that no man can shut. Believe that he is working behind the scenes in your favor. Believe that it's your season. Believe Believe that it's your time. Get ready to embrace every blessing that God has in store for you. Because if you're in that dry season, if you feel it, God's not speaking to you. Know that God is storing them blessings up for you. And in due season, you will reap the harvest. I believe we're beginning to build again after COVID. We're beginning to build. His spirit is still with us today. Just look in the right direction. And that is the spirit of the Lord. With our eyes fixed upon him, we have the confidence. It gives us the confidence that it don't matter what people say around us. You know that as you're planting and as you're watering and as you're sacrificing and as you're going through them secret battles that God is building. It's it's time to make disciples. It's time to lay the hands. It's time to heal the people. It's time to speak life to the dead. Because God is asking you to go into the harvest, to go into the field. God wants you to be his hands. God wants you to be his voice. Go into the fields. Scatter the seed amongst the land. Go and make disciples. Go and reach the treasures. Go and get it out there and get things done. It is time to go. Victory Outreach Gang Chino It is time to go And God is desiring a young generation And I believe we have a huge portion of, of, of world shakers in this room Here this morning That God's going to make a difference in this world through you Maybe you've been in a dry season And you know that seeds have been planted before in your life You've had revelation in your life There's There's been a Paul in your life that has scattered the seed You know there's been a and Apollos in your life, there's been a leader in your life that has begun to, to water it, but I'm going to water it right now, I'm going to water that seed right now, that Ezekiel went down to the valley, Ezekiel went down to the valley, the Bible says that them bones were very dry, there was no life, but God said to Ezekiel, preach to the four winds, to the north, to the east, to the south, and to the west, and he preached, and guess what, life came into them bones that graveyard it says son of man can these bones live I said sovereign Lord you alone know then he said to me prophesy to these bones and say to them dry bones hear the word of the Lord come on you preach the word of God whether they like it or whether they don't whether they whether they're there or whether they're not you can preach it come on you've been called to preach you've been called to lay hands you've been called to speak in a heavenly language you've been delivered to deliver you've been transformed to transform and see 
Man is powerful. Man can prompt you. Man can motivate you. Man can teach. Man can facilitate an atmosphere within the moment. But then it's down to God to do what beyond the moment. It's down to God to do beyond the moment. And I believe that God is saying that we need a personal connection. It's going to take a personal connection. Not just in the sanctuary. It ain't going to be enough just to worship in the sanctuary, but it's going to take a personal connection. And understand that even when you're in that season, that God calls you into the season, but he also calls you out of that season too. And we're nothing but vessels. And when we begin to understand that our life is not our own, that it's him that we be belong, that life becomes a little bit easier. When we begin to put away our own desires, our own fleshy needs, the things that we think we need within our life, and begin to put God at the forefront and do everything onto him, and, to, and, and, and that we walk in his will and, and not our own, it is then. You know, I was once like Jonah. Jonah, I, had, I got a glimpse of God, I had run away, and you know the thing about Jonah when I studied it back in the men's home was that Jonah went down to Joppa, he was called the Nineveh, but he wanted to go to Tarshish, and even on the map, when you look it up, Tarshish was 2,500 miles away from where he was, Nineveh was only 500 miles away. So even when you look at it logically, it didn't make sense for him to go to Tarshish. It would have took more effort. It would have took more time. It would have took more pain. It would have took more endurance for him to go to that land that he wanted to go to rather than the land that God had called him to. And, you know, I believe that sometimes we can be like that. Sometimes we would like to go our own way sometimes we would like to make our own decisions sometimes we would you know like to do things that you know we want to do rather than the things that God wants us to do and we can get to that point where we're standing at Joppa and we have to make the decision are we going to Tarshish or are we going to Nineveh but we're in the last days and there's souls out there that need to be saved. We're in the last days, and I believe that God has saved the blessed for last, and they're in the room here tonight. God has saved the best for last. You know, the worship can come. We're going to have a good altar call tonight. The worship can come. I'm going to speak for a little bit more, but I believe that God wants to do a powerful altar call here tonight. You know, it's going to take the prayer. It's going to take devotional, it's going to take the B groups, it's going to take fasting, it's going to take the, the, the uncomplicated principles and the habits that orbit around God. You know, I was listening to, I listened to Greg Rochelle quite a lot and uh, he, he says in one of his podcasts that successful people do consistently what other people do occasionally. Small things lead into big things over time. And Jesus never said, but I just can't find the time to pray. He had a consistent habit of breaking away from the crowds, of breaking away from the people, and having consistent time with God. And your habits won't make you, your habits will break you, because you become what you repeatedly do. 92% of the New Year's resolutions are gone by Valentine's Day. That's only a couple of months and you end up like the Apostle Paul. In Romans chapter 7, verse 15 to 16, you begin to say to yourself, I do not understand what I do, but what I want to do, I do not do, but what I hate to do, I do. And if I do what I do not want to do, I agree that the law is good. I mean, Come in, we, we come into that state of confusion. We usually have good intentions, but we seem to fail. And you know, winners and losers, they all have the same goals in life. Winners and losers have the same goals. When, when you look at a sports, when you look at a coach, whether it be football, whether it be, you know, what, what, whatever it is, they all, don't, none of them say we're going to shift for last place this year. We're going to go for sixth place. We're going to go for fifth place. They have one goal in target, and that is to come first place. They all have the same vision, but end up with different results. United We Can brought us together, 
And we have family across the world with the same vision. So if Chino wins, then Liverpool wins. So if the Los Angeles third wave LA base wins, then Whittier wins. So if Panama wins, then Guadalajara wins. If Germany wins, then Ireland wins. Because Pastor Sonny shoots for first place. Pastor Sonny scattered seed for many, many years. And leaders have begun to rise up in this ministry and water them seeds. But God, but God has seen the ministry fit to grow to the place that it's at today, to the level that it is at today. And I don't want to be the de generation that lets the word of God become so common that we have access to it, but it has no impact. That the promised scriptures that our ministry have, we have access to them, but it begins to lose the impact that we mustn't let the promised scriptures become familiar, that we can't be that generation that lets the voices of our leaders become so familiar that they no longer carry the weight that they once did before. Come on, where's my armor bearers I in this place? Come on, if we have armor bearers, you stand to your feet here tonight, ready to bear the weight of the ministry. If we have men and women of God who are ready to do whatever it takes, stand to your feet. If we have men and, and, and women who are ready to to fill the seats in this place. Come on, who's ready to answer the call? Who's ready? There's treasures out there that has not been hit yet. There's people out there that are still lost. There's people out there who are still broken. And Pastor Sonny, like Paul, he planted the seed and leaders began to rise up and water that seed. God then granted the expansion and extended victory outreach from Chino throughout the entire world. And this is the mother church. This is the mother church and all eyes around the world are upon you. It's a heavy responsibility. See, United We Can doesn't matter if God's not in it because United We Can, we can only go so far. But God. With God, United We Can takes nations. And you know, the altar is opened right now. The altar is opened. And I believe that God is going to do something supernatural in this place. I believe that God is going to move. I believe that people are going to leave different here tonight. But it's going to require you to step out. It's going to require you seeing beyond that moment. It's going to require you having faith. That God is who he says he is. Come on, you may need to weep tonight. You may need to press in tonight. You may need to get on your knees tonight. You may need to cry out tonight. But God is desiring your sacrifice. God is desiring your voice to open up. God is desiring. Come on, you need to make sure you get your breakthrough here tonight. God is not a God who just says words for the sake of saying words. But his words carry weight. And I believe under the unction of the Holy Spirit, God is going to move in this place. God wants to revive. God wants to revitalize. God wants to renew. Come on, there's souls that are waiting on your yes. There is people out there that are waiting on your yes. There is people out there who's waiting on you to lift your hands. There is people out there who's waiting on you to realize what you have with inside you. Come on, lift your hands up to God tonight.
We're not finished yet. God's not finished moving. God still wants to move. Just as you lift your hands and you keep your eyes closed, you know, you need to be positioned correctly. He's positioned you in this wave of revival. And this is who we are. It's our time to take our place. God has a lane with your name on it. It's time to position ourselves within this wave, within this third wave movement. You know, before a surfer catches a wave, they, they face a test, a test of being properly positioned. They must calculate every possible outcome, always having confidence in each decision that is made. For if the surfer makes one wrong decision, the slightest bit of doubt, the slightest bit of fear, the slightest bit of the insecurities creep in, that he may not catch that wave, and that wave may wipe him out. And just as your eyes are closed, God's going to position you right here tonight. God's going to reveal to you where it is that he wants to take you to been a Paul in your life and he scattered seed amongst the land you're in the field and you have leaders around you and they're watering that seed but God but God wants to grow you God wants to grow you from the inside out and I don't know maybe you haven't weeped in a while maybe you haven't cried out to God in a while maybe you that dry season I don't know where you're at or you might be holding on to the luggage of life bearing them burdens that you were never intended to bear and God wants you to release because if he said if you can release what's in your hands 
I can release what's in my hands. You're chosen. You are set apart. God is anointing you. God is appointing you. And you know, David didn't know what the future held as he faced the giant that was in front of him, but he also didn't know that he would be king one day. All he knew that, that there was a dependency upon his actions. That at that moment and at that time, there was a dependency upon his actions. Now, he didn't know that there was going to be so many people saved. He didn't know that there was going to be an army of God that was going to rise up in that time. He didn't know that what he was sowing in that season was going to come to fruition in the way it did. But I believe that God's saying that there, there is a dependency upon your actions here tonight. There is a dependency from one generation to the next. There's a dependency upon your actions. So God's not finished. We're going to continue to lift our hands. We're going to continue to cry out. The worship team are going to continue. God wants to move. God is moving. God is moving. God is speaking. God is speaking to you. It's time. It's time. It's time. It's time to go. It's time to build this. from a broken home, but God. You come from a broken situation, but God came, is coming in. You don't have it all together, but God. You may not have the words to speak yet, but God. But God is going to use you. He's not done with you. He's here, and he's reminding people here tonight of the calling he's placed upon your life. We are not called to be average. God has separated us for such a time as this. We are the God's anointed now generation. That means that we're called to impact now. That means we're, we need to rise up and answer the call now. That means that we need to be the people he has called us to be now. So lift up your hands right there where you're at in full surrenderance. Allow this word to be sealed in your heart. To say, God, uh, surround me with the people that will continue to, to water and, and plant into my life so I can flourish, knowing that you bring the increase. Oh, Father, bring the increase, Father. Enlarge us. Expand us. Grow us, Lord. But we know you've given us a, a great responsibility, Lord, as the ministry of Victory Outreach, as, as the Mother Church gang, Lord. You, you've given us a responsibility. We want to rise up. And 
we want to answer the call. We want to be those vessels of honor you call us to be. Oh, Holy Spirit, have your way, Lord. Don't let us leave this place the same. Don't let us leave this place the same, Lord. Fill us up, Lord. Fill us up, Lord, so we will overflow into this generation. atmosphere we're going to give somebody even if it's just one person the opportunity to make the best decision of their life you may be here tonight and at one time you were serving God but for whatever reason situations got in the way and you got off track well tonight you're going to get back on track because God's not finished with you he has a plan for your life a plan to prosper to give you hope in the future he's known you ever since you were in your mother's womb or maybe you've been coming or maybe it's your first time here and you and, and you heard the message, and it was it, it impacted your heart. But in order for God to use us, we need to be surrendered to his will. Because there's many people that they know about God, but they don't know him in an intimate way. And tonight, we want to give you the opportunity to be assured that you're in right standings with him. Because the Bible says life is but a vapor. It's here today and gone tomorrow. And tomorrow is promised to no one. So everybody has about everybody's eyes closed. And you're here tonight and you want to leave this place with certainty, knowing that you're right where you need to be with God. Like I said, whether you've never been saved or at one point you were serving God, tonight's your night. Because we serve a God of grace, but we don't want to take advantage of that grace. We don't want to take advantage of that grace and mercy he's placed upon our lives. So if that's you, on the count of three, and you're serious and you mean business and you want to be part of this army that God is raising up here in Victory Hour, here in the gang, if that's you... On the count of three, I want you to lift up your hand. One, it's the best decision of your life. Two, I promise you will not regret it. Three, if that's you, lift up your hand. You want to make that decision. Hallelujah. See some hands. Uh, anyone else? See that hand? See that hand? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Anyone else? Don't feel embarrassed. We've all done this. Living a life of surrender to the God. See those hands? Awesome. Has about every eyes closed. And I want you to repeat this prayer after me. I mean, you're not saying it to me, I'm nobody. It's between you and God. Meaning with everything that's within you. And gang, let's help him out. Say, Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner. But I also know that you died for me. And you not only died for me, but you rose on the third day. Father, come into my life and take complete control. Give me the strength. And give me the faith to serve you the rest of my life. Be my Savior and be my Lord. 
Come on, so quick pray. Father God, Lord, I thank you, Lord, for these individuals that made the best decision of their life. I pray, Lord, they'll surround themselves with the right people. That will, they will continue to, to water and plant seeds into their lives, Lord, so you can bring the increase. I, I pray, Lord, that they will be focused and that they will serve you with everything that's within them, Lord. That you will use them to do great and mighty powerful things for your honor, for your glory, Lord. And I pray for everyone here tonight, Lord. That this word, Lord, we know it penetrated our hearts. And I pray, Lord, that we will not leave this place the same, Lord. But we will have confidence knowing that you're with us. And that we will move swiftly. And that we will move with urgency. That we will not be complacent, Lord. Because we know that you're coming back, Lord. And you have called us, Lord, to reach this generation. You, you have equipped us and you are preparing us, Lord. Let us have the willingness, Father to continue to respond to the calling you placed upon our lives, Lord. Father, you've been so faithful in our church. You've been so faithful in our movement, Lord. But we know that greater things are still to be done, Lord. And you, you can use anybody. You can use us as the God's anointed now generation. And with that, we thank you for what you've done. And we thank you in advance for what you're going to continue to do. We give you all the honor. We give you all the glory. And the gang says, and the gang says, Come on, clap your hands, all you people. Come on, shout right there where you are. Shout. Shout with the voice of triumph. We are victory outreach. We're not defeated outreach. We have the victory. Come on, somebody. You may make your way back to your seats. We're not done here tonight. So please do not leave. We want to do something very, very special. How many were blessed here tonight by the word? Nathan. Nathan brought a powerful word. Brought a powerful, dynamic word. And we want to continue to bless him because, you know, in Victory Outreach, we love to bless the people that come to speak, come and minister. They don't ask for anything. But as the mother church is Victory Outreach, we want to plant seed. Look at your neighbor and say, we want to plant a seed. I've learned a long time ago that you want to plant seed into good soil. And Brother Nathan is great soil. So with that, if you need an um, offering envelope, you can lift up your hands at this time. You need an offering envelope. Also, you can still text to give. You can text VO to 45777 and the dollar sign and the amount. And you want it to go towards the love. And we're going to make sure that all the finances go to Brother Nathan and his ministry. There's a handle here lifted right here. So the ushers make sure we can get my brother here an envelope. And they're newlyweds. Come on. So they just got married a couple weeks ago. And they've been spending it all over the world in the United States. And we want to be a blessing here as the Mother Church Gang. So everybody stand. Lift up your tithing envelope, I mean your offering envelope, also your mobile device. And let's be generous. Do I have any generous people in the house here tonight? Come on. Let's be generous and let's plant a seed because we know that God is going to continue to move and use this man of God to create a mighty powerful way. Father God, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for the word that was delivered here tonight, Lord. And I pray that you bless those that are stepping out, Lord, and giving this special love offering. I pray, Lord, that they will do it with the spirit of generosity and gratitude, first of all, for what you've done in their lives, Lord. And as we plant this seed, that you will continue to bless the man of God, him and his wife, Lord, and his family. And that you will use them in such a mighty way in this third wave, Lord. We thank you. In Jesus' name, we all say? Amen. You may come to the basket if you want to give her traditionally. Come with a smile. Be that cheerful giver. Be that cheerful giver. Come with a smile. You may be seated. There's still something we still want to do special here tonight. any joyous people here tonight. Now for those that don't know, we just had a very special birthday. Our gang pastor, Pastor Ray, was just his birthday. Pastor Ray, can you make your way on up? Let's all stand. Come on. Give a round of applause. How many love Pastor Ray? And worship team, can we sing happy birthday? I can't sing because everybody will leave. On the count of three. One, two, three. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Pastor Ray. Happy birthday to you. Oh. 
Pastor Ray, we love you. We have a very special gift for you as well. Can you open it? Yeah, we want him to open it up. On behalf of our gang, we wanted to bless you. Pastor Ray, can you open up your gift? I think you're going to be excited about this. Pastor Ray has joined the Yeezy gang. Come on, somebody. Hook them up with some Yeezys. Come on, Pastor Ray's going to bust them out. Come on, man. Maybe we have some of the guys make their way, some of the leaders, and we're going to pray. That's the unveiling right there. Look at that. Come, come on. The Bible says how beautiful are the feet of those that bring forth the good news. Oh, we're looking fresh. He's going to look good. He's going to say he's going to look good. Pastor Spencer, can you pray for Pastor Ray? Amen. How many appreciate... Our gang leader, Pastor Ray. Come on, let's give it up for him one more time. As we all stretch our hands towards Pastor Ray, let's come in agreement and let's pray for him. Heavenly Father, God, we come before you, God, this evening. Lord, we thank you, God, for our gang leader, Lord, for Pastor Ray, God. We thank you, God, for how you've used him in such a special, mighty way within our lives, God. And we pray that, God, this year, this next year, God, that you would continue just to prosper him, God. Prosper everything he puts his hands to, Lord. We pray that you continue to give him, God, great vision. Father, you give him strength, energy, and stamina, God, to continue, Father, to run his race, Lord. We pray a covering, God, over Sister Siobhan, over Jay, Juliana, his precious family, Lord, God, we uh, pray you just continue to lead him, guide him, God, ordain every single step of the way, God. Father, we thank you, we love you, and it's in Jesus' name that we all say amen and amen. Hallelujah. Come on, so make sure you wish Pastor Ray a happy birthday. Come on, give the Lord one more good hand. Now, don't be in a rush to leave in the foyer. We have some very special coffee, so make it a point to stop by. And also next week, we're going to be having a movie night here with the entire gang. So invite somebody on out. It's going to be so awesome. V fam, we thank you for tuning in. We'll see you next week. God bless. You don't come, we won't move. We're